How's it going YouTube? Cody Bernardi here with my fifth attempt at making this video. Uh, I, I tried making this video and for whatever reason my microphone right here decides to be ear rapey for lack of better terms. Every time I try to make this video it just has like really sharp spikes when I try to talk so I am pushing it away from my face. Um, so anyways, how's it going everyone? It's been a while since I made a YouTube video. Uh, today's video, we are going to be talking about what the hell happened with Twitter yesterday. Um, at least when I'm making this video, this event happened on July 15th, 2020. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what I'm talking about, or if you live under a rock, or you just simply don't partake in the hole that we all call Twitter. They had a massive security breach yesterday. There is some big name people on there that had their accounts taken over. First one I saw was Elon Musk. Uh, he, he tweeted the, the typical like Elon Musk scam. Like you'll see people tweeting or responding in Elon Musk tweets saying, join this Bitcoin pyramid scheme thing. Uh, well, it happened, but on his actual account, um, and this happened to like way more people, but I saw this as like, send this Bitcoin address $1,000 and we'll send you $2,000 back. I'm like, huh, okay, that's real. Um, turns out like Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, Apple, uh, I think Kanye West, I don't know. I, I saw that somewhere, a ton of accounts that said, send a thousand bucks to this Bitcoin address and we will send you 2000 bucks back. Well, that Bitcoin address got around $110,000 uh, worth of Bitcoin last time I checked. Now, I want to break down a few things. I want to, A, what I think the, these kind of hackers are, um, why I don't think it's a nation state attack, and I have some sympathy for Twitter security. And also, apologies, I got like cat hair in my eye. Woohoo. Cat hair in my eye. I hate cats. So I don't think this is a sophisticated attack that some people might think it is uh, for one reason in particular. Now, I'm not saying that the attack that happened wasn't, you know, well thought out. I don't know. Honest, I, I don't know the full details. I don't know. Sh <laughs> well, I can only make uh, calculated uh, assessments, judgments on what I think happened. I don't work at Twitter. I don't know anyone that works at Twitter. I just worked in a sock uh, that is of size, maybe a little bit bigger. So I kind of understand how certain things work. Uh, I don't think it was a, a, a nation state or some ridiculous hacker attack because their return on investment was $100,000 or whatever it ended up being. That's assuming all of those Bitcoin transactions were legitimate, AKA, the attacker wasn't tumbling at their own crypto, meaning they're sending themselves their own Bitcoin just to make it look a little bit more legitimate, which I think happened. Um, Cause you have to be a complete fool to fall for this. Or there's some other factors, you know, that might cause someone to do this, fall for it, which is sad. And I feel for those people. Um, but they, they got a hundred thousand bucks. I think they're skids. Whoever did this, they're fucking skids because they had access to Elon Musk's account. I'm just going to use him specifically. Elon Musk in the past has tweeted out on um, May 1st of this year at 11.11 a.m. Tesla stock is too high in my opinion. The stock fucking tanked after he said that. That was in the middle of the trading day. It tanked. So the person who had access to his account could have tweeted been a little bit more. Look right here. He tweeted that and the stock fell six, six percent, six point four, four percent after his tweet. It's just like if if this per, if this if this attacker was smart, they would have made way more money than just this stupid Bitcoin scheme. They could have you know, bought some put options or shorted the stock and made a similar tweet and the stock would have tanked. It's at an all time high right now. They didn't take advantage of that. So they're stupid. They're skids. They blew it. They had a perfect access to multiple high profile verified accounts and they blew it. 
for some Bitcoin sh**. Because what what was what was going through their heads? Did they think because it was Bitcoin they're somehow anonymous, and that the logs that they were do using the, their IP, their source IP, even if they were going through a VPN, they could with a proper police warrants they could still obtain that info and find out who the hell did this. Like they're fucking <laughs> stupid. Why were they? They were so overt about this. The FBI is now involved. So you know now you got FBI cyber crime unit involved. Whoever did this is fucked. <laughs> and I'm glad that they didn't get access to Donald Trump's Twitter because we do official business, you know, official presidential business on Twitter. So I'm glad we didn't have World War Three. We had that scare in the beginning of the year. Y'all remember that on like January 3rd with Iran. And now, I feel bad. I, I feel some sympathy for Twitter's uh, SOC, Security Operations Center. Because, it, could, it okay, it could be one of two things. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt because I don't fully understand or I don't fully know what happened. It could be one of two things. They either had, they just kind of got completely blindsided and completely missed this in their audit. I doubt that's the case. What I think has happened, and I'll give you an anecdote. Uh, when I was on the vulnerability management team at Amazon, you'll find this at any big corporation, is the the security teams, they always look for risks. Every team looks for a risk in some way, shape, or form. They even have dedicated risk teams and, and boil them up. When I, and I'll explain all this from a VM perspective. So vulnerability management team, we scan. You do your scans, you find vulnerabilities on systems, and you let the owners of those systems know you need to patch. It's plain and simple. You patch. But that's not the entire picture. That's 50% of the picture. You, you, you scan and the security team wants to patch. They want 100% compliance. But in environments the size of Twitter's, the size of Amazon's, the size of Microsoft, these big companies, you cannot get 100% compliance no matter what because the business is in the business for uptime or whatever. I can't think of a justified reason why this happened, why there wasn't a mitigating control in place, but I can only, just something, the tip of my tongue thinks that someone acknowledged the risk. The security team said, hey, this is a risk. This is what could happen. Fix it or accept it. And when accepting a risk, what that means is the team that owns that product, their management chain signs off on the risk. So if that risk was to then be exploited, they're kind of, you know, on the hook for that, per, you know, for that incident. Um, that's common in any organization. You cannot ex expect 100% compliance if you're in an enterprise environment. So I have a gut feeling there was this risk at Twitter that they said, there's no way that could happen. And it happened. I just have a gut feeling, but I don't know. I don't know. They, they, it said it was a social engineering attack against a few of, a few of their employees, so it was a phishing attack. I don't, I can't really think of anything else that could scale like that. Um, but there are lessons to be learned here. Uh, we all experience, you know, shit <coughs> like this. Should Twitter be held accountable? Absolutely. I don't know who at Twitter is responsible for this. I don't know if they just didn't have specific alarming. What they can do, and which which I think should be implemented at Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, is device-specific logins. I don't know exactly how that's going to work out. I don't know if that goes off MAC address. I don't know if that goes off device ID, like an issued um, agent or anything like that. But someone just randomly shouldn't be able to access all of these high profile accounts, especially political figures um, like Joe Biden and Barack Obama. But mm, you got to learn from it. I hope everyone else learns from this once they come out with their public uh, statement, which I'm sure they will. Um, but anyways, that is it for this video. If you guys enjoy content like this, please smash the like button and the subscribe button with the bell notification. I promise to make more technical videos just let me know what you guys want. You know, I I, I, I like OSINT. I like, um, like I, I, the mic got, kept getting closer to my face throughout the video somehow. Um, if, if you guys want more OSINT videos, let me know. If you want other things, 
let me know. But anyways, that is it. Y'all take care. Goodbye. Yo, hey, what's up, man? Hey, are you going to Black Hat this year? Oh, hey, we have a booth. Come check. We, we just released a new product. So, um, yeah, so the product, it it's to, p to put it in a high level. We it's basically we use AI alongside machine learning, deep analysis. It takes events on endpoints, integrates it to your sim to the cloud where we use WatchGuard and we send SMS alerts and email alerts using AWS. It's a great product. I think you should definitely check it out. We we have a 30 day free trial, you know, 30 day no hassle. <laughs> Check it out, man. You need this in your security teams. Oh, you don't, we will automate your sock. Who needs it? I'm telling you, we have a fully AI-based sock. Oh, oh, don't worry. It's not a risk. Just check it out. Come to Black Hat, man.